Hello everybody, we're going to take a second and we're going to talk about bow fishing boats. Now the podcast that I did on this will cover everything in full detail, of all kinds of different types of boats and everything, everything is involved in that podcast for you. This one I'm going to kind of just go over my boat. This is my third attempt at building a bow fishing boat and I'm, I'm really happy with it. I've been using it all season like this. I just built it for the first time this season and I love it. And it's actually probably one of the most affordable versions you can go and you know, buying all new stuff. I built this boat for under six thousand dollars and almost half of that alone was just in the motor uh, but now uh, having a mud motor is something I wish I, I could have done but it being a 16 by 48 boat 16 feet long 48 inches across the bottom and a flat bottom uh, the weight of a mud motor would have been too much have been another 150 pounds heavier than the motor I got on there and I just didn't want to deal with that extra weight on there and it would have been about two thousand dollars more for that mud motor so I'm sticking with an outboard on here but it's nice I can use that outboard motor to get me in to the fishing spots then once I get to the fishing spots I basically just tip that motor up and do the rest with the trolling motor now again a flat bottom boat is going to be ideal this boat here the 1648 John boat this thing will let me float in about three inches maybe four inches of water yeah you know, once I get heavily loaded five inches but I can take this boat into places that most boats could never dream of going just pure flat bottom boat now, again, in the podcast, I'll cover a bunch of different kind of boats, but I'm going to go over some of the key components that are nice to have on any bow fishing boat. First of all, you're going to need some sort of a deck, or you're going to want some sort of deck. It's nice. It gets you up a little higher and uh, gives you somewhere to stand, gets you up above the lights. But this deck, you can make it out of aluminum. You can make it out of wood. I made mine out of wood. Mine is six and a half feet from front to back and five and a half feet wide, and it's just three quarter inch plywood with a two by four frame. It weighs about 130 pounds total and it, it uh, cost me about a hundred bucks to build and I just painted it with some some deck paint and it holds up really well <coughs> excuse me likewise I have regular Home Depot bought halogen work lights these are uh, like $16 a piece and what I did is I replaced all the bulbs in with 300 watt bulbs so I am running 10 300 watt halogen work lights on there and I'm powering them by a uh, tractor supply, a champion generator, it's a 4000 max, 3500 constant run generator. Been using that generator for three seasons now. It's a great generator, it's cheap, it was only 299 bucks at tractor supply. The pad underneath there is basically to help keep the vibration down a little bit and the noise down from that and the, the boards that are under there just keeps it from you know sliding off my little floor I made and getting into the back seat. Gives me a little room to get in there when I gotta drive. So again, just little personal preferences. Uh, but with the lights, you'll notice on here too, I made my own brackets. These brackets that are on here, it's basically just one and a half inch aluminum pieces that I got from Home Depot. I bent them on my vise into the shape I wanted and drilled some holes. But the brackets that come with the lights are not bad, but they're not quite as sturdy, so I made my own. Since I leave these lights on here all year long, we when we're regular fishing, we can get into some rougher water sometimes and the you know the bow starts jumping around and the waves and it, it gets kind of hard on those the brackets that come with the lights so I made my own doesn't cost much money took a little time but uh, it just made them a little more durable and it makes them stay there in, in place a little better and not flop around so much but you're gonna need a trolling motor on the front of any bow fishing boat that you're going to use unless it's an air boat. And having a trolling motor, I prefer to use a transom mounted trolling motor. That's the kind here that's got the handle on it. It's made for the back of the boat. You spin the head. This head will spin right around so that you can use it on the front. And then well, all I did was I just made a mount out of wood just like that that I mounted to right on the front of the boat. But now I can actually steer the boat and you're going to use that most of the time. When you're in your shallows and you're bow fishing, most of the water you're going to be in is going to be shallow water, weed flats, that kind of stuff and so you're going to want to be able to drive from the front of the boat. I don't use that outboard too much when I'm actually in below three feet of water just for the risk of hitting something with it in a lot of the marshes and places I fish and even out on the bay the water can get shallow, it can be stumpy, it can be rocky, too many variables and I'd rather hit it with a trolling motor than hit it with a with a three thousand dollar outboard. So I use that trolling motor for most of everything when I'm bow fishing and some of the other features that you're going to look for or you're going to want to have in there is uh, you're going to need something to hold your fish together or carry your fish when you get them in a boat. 
A lot of people use a 55 gallon drum and they just cut the top of it off and that works great and I use that for a while but what I found better is this two bin system and what's nice about using this two bin system is once I fill one of those bins up we can take that and set it back here on the bench seat in the back and get it out of the way and still keep going and what it does is it puts weight towards the back of the boat as opposed to more in the front and keeps the boat a little more level but another nice thing that it does too is it allows us to uh, be able with two people to carry each each bale out of here where that 55 gallon drum trying to carry that out with even two people when it's full it gets kind of hard and it's a lot of work to get it in and out of the boat and into the back of the truck or you know taking it out to do stuff so uh, makes it kind of tricky and it will, in the podcast I get into what to do with your fish once you get them and uh, the benefits of them and that kind of stuff so I'm not going to get into that detail here um, back to the boat you'll notice that I have a floor in here what I did though is I did a little different I made my floor kind of a half floor you'll notice that it's open here in the front and it's also so open here in the back part back here and in the sides right down here these are all open so that you can get in here too on both sides what that does is that allows me to clean this out really good because you're going to have a lot of fish blood and scales and stuff like that that are going to be in this boat. If the floor comes all the way in and if it's not exact custom fit and sealed off, that stuff is going to get underneath that floor and it's going to be impossible to clean out. This system allows me to clean it. I can take my holes and stick my holes right under there and shoot that stuff right up out the other side, clean it out really good. So that's why that floor looks like it's not quite completed. I just put a little aluminum guard on there right in here so people aren't ripping the edges of it up. But basically having that half floor makes it where I can clean the floor out or clean the boat out really good when it's all done. Having you're gonna have to have lights on the front and the back of the boat. This is just a homemade stern light that I put on there, all around light, just something sweet and easy. You're gonna want a depth finder is nice. It gives you lets you know what kind of depth because there's places that fish will be working three feet of water, and if you go to a different spot on lake, if they're three feet at one spot, on the another spot you go to, they're probably gonna be in that same three feet of water. So knowing your water depth is good, and then if you get one like this, it's got a GPS in there. At night, when you're out there in some of those places, it can be hard to find your way around or remember where you went. These are nice it'll let you you know follow your breadcrumb trail back out of there you're going to need a battery to run your trolling motor uh, big batteries are good i actually have another one too what i did is i put a second battery over on this side over here so i got second battery here first battery there when that one dies i can use these cables that are on here and jump this battery over to that one so really quick and easy i can automatically have you know to have this battery be the main battery and take over just by connecting them together with that this is a nice feature. Having a dry box on the boat is good because you can put your cell phones and your wallets and stuff like that in there. Because you are, if you're like us, you're going to end up coming off the boat a few times. What happens is you'll be standing up here on the deck fishing, you'll be running that trolling motor, and then you're going to hit a stump or you're going to hit a sandbar, and it's going to stop the boat basically in its tracks, and you're going to keep going with momentum, and you're going to walk right off the front of the boat. And it's, it's happened four or five times with us on this one and with the other boats that we had. So it's kind of nice to be able to get your wallet and and your cell phone and put it someplace on the boat where it's safe and where you don't got to worry about it <clears throat> now this is another important feature you're going to want to have some kind of a paddle you can see i got a paddle kind of just or, uh, locked on and bolted down or, or clamped down on the side over there paddle's definitely going to be good not only in case of uh, you know the motors going out or something like that but it's good to have to get you off uh, when you do get stuck to help push you through areas if you got two people and when you're trying to push this push pole here that i have you can see on the side it starts right here is the end of it and it runs all the way down that, that 10 foot push pole that i got or 12 foot i don't remember what length it is but man that thing is awesome we use this so much that i've actually had to paint this thing again four times now but what's nice about it is uh when you get into the shallows and you get the boat jammed up or if you're in a tight spot or in a bunch of weeds or stumps or you get hooked up on something you can use that push pull and push yourself out of there all i did to mount it is i basically just went to home depot and got a couple of these little clamps i stuck them on there i cut them off so they were half size and i put some radiator holes on it hold that nice and secure and then i got two uh, bungee cords here that just kind of hook on here one there and one down there that hold it down so it stays nice and solid and won't come out of there and it's real quick and easy to get to so these are some of the key features of a bow fishing boat that you're going to want to you know maybe be looking into as you build yours that's the whole purpose of this was to kind of give you some ideas i left it underneath the deck completely open so we could get up in there and i can i store all my life jackets my arrow tube the tool kit my bow or my bow fishing bag everything that you want i or that i would need i store 
up under that deck so it keeps the boat all nice and clean. I also have the lights up in there. Uh, there are the switches for the lights. One nice thing too, these little LED lights, these little strip lights that I have here and I got one over on that side. Uh, they're very affordable. I think they were about eight or ten dollars but what they do is they light up this whole area in here and when you're fishing once you shoot a fish when you go to put it in the bin sometimes you got line wrapped around or if you got a pass through trying to get that line taken care of and trying to get everything back together it's nice to have a little bit of light in the, in the boat when you're working so those come in really handy we use them all the time when we're out there now we use this boat not only for bow fishing, but we also use it for regular fishing. So what's nice is I set the generator right there, and then I have the cord that all my lights are connected to sits right down here. And I can drag this cord out, plug it into the generator, run the lights. When I'm done bow fishing and I go to regular fish, I can take and tuck that cord back up under the deck. It's out of the way, it's convenient, it's nice, and then I'll take that generator, pop it right out, and then I have two seats that actually sit in here. Actually I have one of them I just got done repairing up there on my workbench but those uh, fold down seats to sit on little pedestals. Those are nice, I can fit two of them right in here, one in the, right here and one right here. We'll move them up on a deck, but it turns it into a regular nice bass fishing boat and for, you know, for backwater fishing. Some of these other things too, a couple little pointers for you. If you do, make sure you got a spare plug. I mounted mine right there under that rail right next to the GPS, but you're gonna wanna have a spare plug. A bilge pump, which you can see I got down here mounted right in the lowest part of the boat. That bilge pump is, in my opinion, it's a good safety factor to have with you because if you end up taking water on, whether they be from waves, with this being a flat bottom boat, all of and us being up on a deck, there's times that if a big wave comes in from, uh, you know, if we're out in a bay and you get a big wave that comes in from a boat that comes over the deck, it's gonna roll a little water in a boat. And the other thing is rainstorms. If it start, you're out there and you're a mile away and it starts raining pretty hard, a boat this size will fill up really fast and it's already got quite a bit of weight in it with four guys and fish and everything we put in here with the generator and stuff so when it rains it will fill a boat like this up really fast and make it dangerous having that bilge pump on the back makes it nice I can pump water out of here really fast and it keeps the boat nice and dry if we do take a wave or you know if it starts raining that'll clean it out really good and make it nice and safe so in my opinion a bilge pump is definitely a safety factor and something worth having on a bow fishing boat now with the lights uh, again like I said they're just shop bought lights they're three 300 watt bulbs that are in them and I'm gonna come around on this side where it's a little more visible but what I did it's kind of cool. I took and I painted, I took the reflectors out and I painted them flat white with grill paint. This is a uh, home, it bought at Home Depot, it's store bought uh, white flat, flat white barbecue grill paint. That's what it is, sorry about that. But what it does is it takes this, these lights usually will produce a couple of hot spots and that's mainly where the light is. Well, by adding that white paint in there, it takes those hot spots out and it spreads the light beam real smooth, real even and real wide. And uh, it doesn't give you more light, but it it's a better use of the light that's available. I love it. I've been using it in that way all season. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been very happy with them. So I'm sticking with the flat white paint in here. It works great. Uh, how I wired these in, basically, I, because of this being a permanent boat, you can just lay, you could make your own and set these on here and just lay the wires across or run them through a piece of PVC. You can do anything you want to. Me with it being permanent, what I did is I actually drilled a hole and I popped that hole in underneath there through the deck. And then what I did is I cut the head off the cord pushed the cord through and then from underneath I reconnected the head to it so it was a nice little small hole nice clean mount and then in the middle of this deck in here I have two power strips that are mounted right in the middle on the underside these cords from these lights come out and they plug right into those power strips then those power strips connect to that cord that I run right up and I plug it right into the generator so nice clean very simple very affordable uh, like I said I mean this is I mean I bought this boat uh, this whole setup was all done brand new it was under six thousand dollars with the trailer the lights the troller the everything and if you bought something used my gosh you I mean I, I know people that have built a boat exactly like this same kind of thing for a thousand dollars so it doesn't cost a lot of money to to do or get involved in so i uh, just kind of wanted to point it out like i said the podcast covers a lot of boats a lot of different kinds of boats sizes of boats for me size wise uh this one was the perfect combination of a boat that was small enough to get back into the the little canals that branch off the rivers in my area and get you back into the backwaters and the marshes and stuff like that but it was also uh what i would consider big enough to be able to take out on the bay on saginaw bay and do some fishing out there which we hit both spots 
lots quite regularly. So for me, it was a perfect happy medium in boat size. Do I wish it would have been a little bit bigger? Yeah, well, mainly wider. I, they made all weld makes a 1652, and originally that's what I wanted, uh, but it was about a thousand dollars more for that boat over this boat, and I just couldn't justify it. But uh, like I said, size-wise, this 16 by 48 is a, is a good boat. It'll fish three perfectly. Four, it gets a little tight, but it'll still do it. We've done it before, and uh, but like I said, it's a perfect two per one person, two person, three person fishing boat, and uh, I'm really happy with it. But it kind of gives you some ideas, some pointers. Maybe you can pick something up from it if, if you're trying to do a bow fishing boat build. Another tip I want to point out is this navigation light. A lot of places will not let you have it down here low. It has to be visible. And if you have all these lights and the motor mount bracket and everything on the boat and you can't see that light, uh, it's not going to be legal. So what I did is I just took a piece of that one and a half inch aluminum and I got it set here. I just kind of bolted it in. I bent it into my shape I wanted and I just mounted that light on top. But this way it's visible when I'm running. It's visible above my light. So kind of a key point. Those little things there are what's going to save you trouble. So make sure you, you make it where your navigation light is visible and you can be seen. Another key component you're going to want is a spare tire. Um, it may sound kind of redundant, but a lot of people I see don't have them, and it's nice, especially when you've been up all day and you've been out all night fishing, and you come back and all of a sudden you get a trailer flat. It's nice to be able to quickly, you know, just go out there, change it in 10 minutes, be done, and be on your way. But it can turn into a nightmare if you don't have one, especially you trying to leave a boat like this on the side of the road with all your gear, fish, generator. So have a spare tire with you. They're not expensive, definitely worth worth having. So, um, but. But that kind of wraps up a little bit about bow fishing boats. I wanted to just give you a little visual support so that you could see one firsthand and kind of get a feel for it. The podcast is going to cover all this stuff in full detail, cover all different kinds of boats, where to fish, how to fish. It's going to cover all that stuff. But uh, I just kind of wanted to hint on this one and show you an example of what one looks like and kind of how I built mine and give you some pointers. But having a bow fishing boat will change everything for you. Fishing from shore is a great thing, and that's how I did it for many, many years. But after getting a boat and realizing that you can fish for as long as you can season wise and you get the opportunities you can I don't even go bow fishing during the day very rarely anymore Pretty much it's all done at night now and it extends your season usually when you're fishing from shore You're basically concentrating on the spawn is happening when the fish come into the shallows and uh, that's it And that's uh, that can only sometimes that's only two weeks long in certain places other places might even extend out to a month But uh, that pretty much wraps up for most people that are doing any shore shoot and uh, by having a boat like this you can extend that season here in Michigan we bow fish while well, the ice as soon as the ice opens up enough to let you even navigate through the ice we're shooting dogfish in the marshes and back off the rivers because they're in there and uh, we'll shoot those dogfish starting as soon as the ice is basically out and we go all the way through September shooting all kinds of you know carp gar goldfish rough fish you name it i mean dogfish shad i mean everything that's out there we're, we we shoot them all the way through all the way till fall and i know people that do it even into december so you could technically if the water's open you can be shooting fish in certain places and you know and make it happen so having a bow fishing boat really expands the season and gives you a bunch of opportunities so uh again there's a boat for you to kind of look at get some ideas from and check the podcast out for full details Thanks for watching, and I will be back soon with more. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye.